A man has just been rescued, still smoldering from a burning empty townhouse. I'm going. Bring a medic down here? Okay. Yeah. Stop the over there. Gary, 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 hold still, pal. I know, hold still. I know, you're hurt. still. No, I say, I'm okay. You are. They found him laying on the second floor hallway. Uh, in fact, his clothes it, it themselves were actually on fire at the time. They were able to put him out and then get him to the outside. As you can see, he was burned. He's got burns on his arms, his face, his chest. I need some information. In America, all firefighters are trained to give medical assistance until their paramedic colleagues arrive. Did you move? Yeah. Did you just sit down right there. That's good. Bring the He was up on the second floor. Rise up. Gary Morris. Oh, I got this. I got it. The victim suffered first and second degree burns. His rescuers say the fire broke out while he was cooking up heroin. Another casualty of the inner city heads off to hospital. Yep. Uh, stay safe. Leave this on this time. Keep that on and let, let, let the, breathe that nice and deep, okay? Because you're going to need that because you need to replace some of the uh, smoke you got inside your system. Fire on 3825 box under control. Units will be out at least an hour on the overhaul. Fire under control, 1807. The streets of Baltimore, a city of 670,000 people, 75% black. Baltimore's residents tend to live in neighborhoods divided up by race. Although African Americans make up the bulk of the population, the fire surface is predominantly white. There are 46 fire stations across the city where the firefighters and paramedics are based. Most of them live out of town, not wanting their own children to grow up in the tough environment they work in. The reason I, I wouldn't want to bring my kids up in, in probably the downtown, the central city, is, is the drugs, the violence, the schools. They just take more tilted up to let it drain out a little better. Yeah. That'd be better. And you, you see uh, good kids, you know, eventually become uh, kids that are caught up in it. And, and if I can avoid my children not to become part of it, well, then I'll, I'll do what I have to do to keep them out of it. Arlen Dole, by contrast, lives in the inner city. It's basically uh, black and white, and it's kind of segregated. Black people are concentrated densely in certain areas, and uh, you have pockets of, of whites thrown in there. If you're 13, sick on the street. Sick on the streets, the common 911 call, usually means drink or drugs. I think the uh, poor areas have tend to have more fires, more medic runs uh, because of the problems of uh, drugs. That, that cause a lot of the uh, medic calls. Uh, a lot of things we uh, that associated with medical problems are as a result of drug use. And uh, in this area, the people that that use drugs tend to be uh, of the uh, poor social economic class. Do you know her? Everybody know her? No. The people doing that, that's what 
Look at him eyes. Yeah, I think she made them little day. Hey! Hello! The life on the streets in Baltimore, particularly this district, is very tough. Uh, there were 365 murders in Baltimore last year. That's one a day. There's innumerable assaults, thefts, rapes. The life on the streets, particularly in the low-income area, which is also accompanied by a high drug usage problem, increases the crime rate greatly. Let's get her up real good. 85% of crime in Baltimore is drug-related. Hello. Come on. She's a little vitamin N, dude. Hey, you got to get up. Come on. Can you open your eyes now? Okay, well, come on, wake up. Yeah. You gotta stretch it. The firefighters and the medic teams work together, this time responding to a suspected drugs overdose. There are an estimated 43,000 illegal drug users in the city. And Jan 13 is in service. This neighborhood is, is full of good people. The, the problems that we have is not, uh, I guess, indicative of the whole neighborhood. You just have a small portion of the people that give it sort of a, a bad, I guess, stereotype, if you will. But um, you have a lot of good people in this neighborhood. I mean, a lot of working class, a lot of working class people that are, I mean, it just happen to be poor, but uh, being poor doesn't make you uh, necessarily morally uh, bad or not, I don't think. Oh, you okay? This is Baltimore's busiest station, situated in the notorious Wild West District. It's where the Medic 4 team are based with Engine 13. It's also home to truck 16, the ladder truck. Steve Kobo is one of the crew. Truck 16, turn out. Possible force injury, injured in a home. Truck 16 has 100-foot ladders and two drivers, one at each end. Steve Kobo's the tiller man. He steers the rear. Truck work, I think, is very exciting in itself. But being back there, driving the back of the truck is exciting. It's like being on a, a big amusement ride. You got to constantly watch where you're turning. And the tillerman has to turn the exact opposite of what the driver is turning. So if the driver is turning left, the tillerman has to turn his wheel to the right to bring the rear end of the truck over to the right. And then when the driver finishes his turn, well, then the tillerman has to bring the wheel back and line himself back in line with the driver. So your hands are moving all the time back there. Hello! Hello, Mr. Richardson! Hello. I can't get down. Yeah. 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 I thought she said that she heard the guy in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In there. yeah. All right, hey, Mike. Do the stick. I like the job of a firefighter. Um, it's something exciting, always different every day. Um, I'm a third generation of firefighter in the family, and I guess it's kind of in the blood, so they say. Um, it's just a, a, it's a good job to help people. You actually, you make a difference somewhere in somebody's life, no matter how small or how large it might be, I know I made a difference somewhere. They've been called to break into an apartment block where a man's been lying injured for 24 hours. He'd fallen and neighbors have been unable to gain entrance to his flat. I can't get up. I was oh yeah, we good. we good, we good. We're in Richardson. We're in You need medicines, Mr. Richardson? I had some pain medicine on the table, but I can't get up. 
I can't get up. Medic assist for a truck company is uh, just, just part of the job here in Baltimore City. I gotta get my shirt off. Right there. Bring some collar and stokes mask. Oh! Collar and stokes. Uh, hey, uh, make sure they bring up uh, a blanket or something with that Stokes basket so we don't tear him up on it. I brought all those in there. Hmm? All the members on the truck company are uh, EMTs, which is emergency medical technicians. We're all certified in, in some basic uh, life support. Oh, my God. What you do with the damn head? I'm fine. I'm fine. He's going to need somebody to I'm fine. I'm fine. All right, go ahead, Al. Proceed at your speed. Watch that. Right, we're Watch coming that. Watch that. We Come on. Watch It's another aspect of helping someone that needs your help, whether it be fighting fire or someone that's uh, unconscious or not feeling well. You've, you've made a difference. And if it means utilizing an engine or a truck company to do the job until a medic unit gets there, well, then that's, that's better than no one not being there. The Engine 13 crew have been called to a fire raging in the rear basement of a house. At the same time, another crew has entered the house from the front and started fighting the blaze too. It's a situation that firefighters fear most. Watch out, babe. Hurry up! As the water supply from the other engine crew turns into a cloud of lethal steam inside the building, it puts Paul Novak and Kenny Lee at serious risk. They're hitting it from the front. Okay, get your list. I'm all right. Got a draft. Up oh, here it comes. Keep it up. Keep it up top. Keep it up top. They're pushing it on us. All right? Yeah, they're pushing it on us. Somewhere in the chaos, Kenny has removed his helmet to put his mask on when the full force of the burning steam hits him. Hit Hang your arms out there! Bring it back! Kenny, bring it back! Despite being burnt, Kenny carries on fighting the blaze. The dangers in firefighting, I, I guess, is kind of, uh, it's there. It's definitely there. It, uh, it doesn't really cross your mind at the moment because the adrenaline is really going. And uh, it's in your mind, but it's kind of in the back of your mind. Kenny and Paul Novak attempt to attack the fire, but are again pushed back by steam generated by the other crew. The window on the right side. The ground ladders are the unsung heroes, so to speak, in, in a truck company. You want to be able to get the ladder in a position where you can open up the dwelling to relieve the smoke and heat off the engine crew. And when they crack their line and they start putting the fire out, you want the windows opened up so you can escape all that heat and toxic smoke. Finally, Kenny realizes he's hurt and is ordered back by Paul Novak.
I don't really worry about the dangers too much because it's like a routine. But uh, my wife and my family do worry a lot. They, every time they hear of a fire on the news, they call and uh, they get pretty upset. I made a promise to my wife that I come home every day and I, they need me to live. A little bit, but I'll live. That's why I told him to back the fuck up. Burning me up, man. What, they took it in the front? Yeah, they were coming and blowing it out at us. Hang on, Buster! I'll live. I think this is right. I think so. I ain't got to go to the hospital, though. Oh, yes, you will, because he'll make you. No. The blast has burnt his face and neck. Now he is the patient in off. the medic truck. I got him on the other side, too? Just a little bit. I mean, it's just red, but no blistering yet. Yeah, you've got one, two, three, four coming up that I can see. There was two just a minute ago. Is it your hurt? Mm, not really. It it's a, a red. red but... All right, well, they're not going to put me off duty for it, right? I doubt it. OK, good. FIB is the Fire Investigation Bureau of the Baltimore City Fire Department. We work around the clock and we respond to working fires, fatal fires, or any time the fire unit think the fire is suspicious. I'm here in my office, I hear the alarm sound, I hear the engines responding on the radio, then I hear them call in uh, what they have, what they find at the scene. If they arrive on the scene, they say, heavy smoke, heavy fire showing, I'm heading for the door. There has been an explosion in the basement of a house. Got a woman on the sidewalk across the street from the fire building, uh, complaining she needs an ambulance, check it out. shopping my uh, fiance and my four children were in the house at the time I come down the street I seen the fire trucks so I came around the other way I noticed my front door open my fiance and everybody's over on the other side nobody's hurt we're just missing a dog that's about it Something went boom. And it scared me. Hey, Chief One, place the fire under control. I'll be placing uh, engine 124 and engine 6 in service. Okay, one fire under control, 1929. No, it's clear. Staff Chief, everything's going to happen. Don't know. Yes, well, the fire is not in the basement. It's in the areas directed in the basement. In my career, I would say that. I've always been uh, very lucky to determine the cause of every fire. Thank you, Chief One. Have a medic here respond to my location, injured civilian. I won't leave until I'm absolutely sure, and I won't give up until I'm absolutely sure. What's that? A small basement fire down here, John. Guy just moved in. It's why everything's at a ray. They just moved all the boxes in and everything. They were working in there, putting the stuff together. I'll, I'll walk down there with the car. Yeah, five beers here. Okay. All right, guy. This is ruptured. 
has an odor flammable liquid stripper. And we have a battery. Hey, yeah. A female occupant. Uh huh. She's across the street. They're getting ready to remove her by a medic unit. Okay. And she said she was down here using some spray paint. Uh huh. If you want to talk to her before she gets out of here? Yes, I will. Yeah, I'll go up and talk to her right now. I have a pretty good idea what happened, but I always like to hear it from the occupant. I was cleaning the kitchen table off to feed my kids dinner, and I was taking the stuff that we had bought. Uh, it's, it was paint that you put on a cabinet uh -huh. and stripper that you have to stripper. take the old paint off with. Yes, ma'am. I took it downstairs, and I had his Jeep battery. It's a power. A, them little power jeeps that the kids ride around little on red with the two red yeah. batteries together. Right. And I dropped the battery and the paint can exploded. And then Sarah hollered, Mommy, fire. And she took two steps up. I grabbed her and I drug her the rest of the way up. Okay. And I grabbed the other three kids and this dog and the other dog was in the backyard. Right. Oh, you dropped it on the in the on the can? I don't know. I didn't oh. even turn around to look because I turned my face when the paint started spraying. Got it on me anyway. Okay. Across town, fire is sweeping through three houses. I just want to talk to you a second. I understand you were in there working at the time? Yes, John and I was. John Griffith's colleague Reggie Session is being called to investigate. And what's your name, sir? Tim, Tim Casey. We were gutting, gutting the house, mm -hmm. and the light bulb broke, and I was putting another light bulb in it, and that dropped, and you heard a boom. Okay. Then a couple seconds later on, you heard a, a boom. Okay. And then there was fire around me, and then I was in the stairs coming up, and I couldn't go over there, and Johnny grabbed me, and he pulled me up. Where was that at? In the front room. In, 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 the, in, in, in the middle room. Totally. Earlier, earlier, about three, four hours ago, we had, we had all our tools inside, and the gas can, the gas can spilled over earlier. And when, when did that occur? In the same room. In the same room, in the middle room? Yeah. yeah. Gas can flipped over. Yeah. Okay. How'd you clean that up? We did, well, we didn't. I mean, it was just a little spill, I mean, just for a second, boom, and, and that so was how much it. How much of what you say, a little spill? A little spill, okay. just something. Just enough to pot them? Yeah, yeah, not even that much. Six miles away, John Griffith continues his hunt for clues. The woman seems like she's pretty um, truthful. I don't think we have a uh, intentionally set fire, but I think maybe something happened other than what the occupant is telling us. We, we get some weird stories, like uh, lightning coming in through the window and uh, birds carrying cigarettes in through the door and things like that. So you listen, you listen very politely, but then you have to form your own opinion. And this will, uh, I'll write this up in my report that I will continue this investigation. Back at the other investigation, things don't add up. How much gas was spilled here? It spilled over just for about a second and then picked it back up and that was it. Uh, the ground. Floor? Yeah. And where was the gasoline can at? Right here. Okay. Did you try to wipe it up? No. No? No. Just on the floor. Where would you say you saw the bulk of the fire at? Right. The flames themselves. You gotta try to think, man, because it's very important because where you're okay. saying the gasoline was spilt, we don't have any evidence of any fire there. That's why it's important for you to remember. Okay. Right, right here. Right here. Right here. What was there? 
there was, I saw, when I was coming through here, I saw like a, like a little flame here, boom. How could you see it if it was behind you? I mean, I was just going just like this, and I heard the second boom, then I, I guess I glanced and then I saw a flash and then John, fire, Johnny, fire, and then I couldn't come up and then Johnny came down and grabbed me up the stairs. Did you smoke? No. Did your brother smoke? No. I mean, Johnny got with yeah. me? Yeah, Johnny does smoke, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I don't smoke. Is Johnny smoking no. today? Let me explain something to you, man. Mm -hmm. I'm from the police department. Mm -hmm. I'm from the arson unit. Mm -hmm. Until we can make a determination, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to treat oh, this, like, no, we're gonna treat no, this like, a criminal, no, like a criminal no, that, offense, okay? Fine. No, go ahead. Go so ahead. it's important that you try that's to remember. Cool, cool, because cool. what you're, listen to me now, what you're saying about the gasoline being spilled is not consistent with this fire, mm -hmm. okay? The can, the can was right here. Well, the can ain't got nothing to do with the fire, okay? okay? okay. This fire started above this bottom step here. Everything was piled right, coming down these steps, well, coming right How long have you been working in this house? Three days. All right. Tell me the possibilities that could have started a fire here. Tell me some possibilities, how a fire could have started here without the use of gasoline. Because the gasoline was over there, and that's where you said it was spilled, right? Mm -hmm. What could have started a fire it, in this it, area? It was spilled, like, right, right through here is where the gasoline was spilled. Spilled where? Right around here. Okay, so we're going from here to here. Well, this area right here. Okay. This guy's got insurance on My mother, I do not know. You don't know? I do not know. And my mom, let me tell my mom, because she just had a nervous breakdown right. on Friday. So I don't want mom to know anything until I speak to the doctor. The fire has completely destroyed three houses. It's the middle of the night. Medic 4 respond to an emergency call. A lot of people that live in the city tend to abuse 911. Uh, I'm not sure if it's actually due to the lack of education or if it's simply the way they've been brought up. Okay. Your mommy come with you, okay? Is this your mommy? A lot of people dial 911 for absolutely anything uh, from anywhere from like a cut finger, I need a band aid, I don't have any at home to I have a headache, do you have any aspirin type thing. Um, at least 70% of our calls, uh, people really do not need an ambulance for. They're very minor injuries or illnesses. I think he's OK. Sometimes that, when it, it's real hot and humid and, and the nose will just bleed a little bit, especially if you hit it. He may have, if he's been blowing his nose or anything, after it pops up and he starts blowing again, it, it breaks off like the, the clots in there and it'll bleed again. Uh, it's probably all it is. We'll look at it real quick, okay? Your mommy's coming, okay? Mommy's coming. Mommy's coming. She said, okay, sweetie. All right. She said, boy, it's all the same. You're just blowing it and it just keeps bleeding again. Yeah, how long are you going to be bumping? Okay, don't let him stick his fingers up there. Well, flashlight. Don't let him stick flashlight? any toys up there or anything. There's you really nothing it? you can do. Now look in your nose and I'll let you hold it, okay? Except to keep his fingers out okay. of it. You see what I'm saying? People are going to keep calling. They're never going to stop calling. You can try and educate people. But most of the time, it's a it's futile effort. That's just a little bit of dry blood there. And it looks like he's been picking it, OK? It's, it's really minor. If you take it with a good attitude and you have a lot of fun, you joke around, you partner, and you get along great. It's, it's really one of the best jobs in the world. Let me see, honey. Let's that blood on his chin. It's just entertainment that you can't pay for. Hey, honey, don't pick your notes. You could scare mommy. You don't want to scare mommy, do you? No. And you don't want to go with us, right? You don't want to have to go to the hospital, right? Learn early. Yeah, you don't want to go early. by 911. <laughs> you don't want to go with us. Yeah, no, don't go 911. It's a bad day. Generally, the night shift seems to be busier than the day shift. I'm not really sure why that is, but it seems like we get more fires at night, and the fires that we do get at night seem to be more extensive than the daytime fires. I'm going to take a left and we'll carry, right? Yeah, right. Right? On each fire alarm, each engine company has a pre-described position that they're supposed to take. It's on the other side of the street. See it right there? 
Look at that. I'm hung up. However, sometimes companies get there when they're not supposed to. Some fires uh, stretching the hose line in isn't always a uh, cut and dried situation. Yeah, on. Come on, take it around the front. Take it around the front. Pass it up. On occasion, where forced to use a fire escape to get at the flames if the first company is not successful or if they even if they are successful to offer a backup line uh, to assist them if the fire is extensive enough. Shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What? Where is Can the you fire? Hold this a bit? I need a tool. Wait a minute. I need to bust that window. It's plexiglass. Watch the watch. They're blowing out on us. They're going to blow it right out on us. They inside? Yes. I can see you feel it coming out. Can you get that open? Yeah. <sighs> All right, I got it. Come on, let's go. Can you see it? Yeah, let's go. Give me a log. Paul Novak and his team are frustrated. They've been beaten to the blaze by another fire crew. Everybody's ready to get in there and get it. The trouble was, if we had hadn't taken such a long lead off, we may have been able to get up the fire escape and beat 19 in, because they had a longer lead up the interior than we had up the exterior. But we still got a little bit of it, anyhow. So we'll get them the next time. After 45 hours of duty, the scenery changes. reasons I enjoy going to the aquarium and feeding the fish, I think, is the serenity and the quiet of it. At the firehouse, there's always telephones to answer, runs to take, uh, the gong going off, somebody's paging me. Uh, there's always something going on. It's always noise, noise, noise. In the water, I think it's one of the only places I've found that I can really be alone. I'm there with my thoughts. It's quiet. It's peaceful. I imagine it's, it's close to me and can come the flying. Being alone with my thoughts and enjoying the peace and quiet is one of the real reasons I enjoy diving. Firefighting in Baltimore isn't all about drugs, fire, and poverty. The city has a thriving economy and an expensively developed marina. But there's the potential for disaster everywhere. Help! Help! You're here to serve. All right. Uh, we were talking, and she did not see the hole, and so she started walking towards us, and then she fell in the hole. And we think the leg, the left leg that is not in the hole, she took all the pressure, and the right leg's fine, we think. Ligament. You did a Clinton. Well, he said, be my first guess. Oh. Well, you either dislocated, sprained, or broke your ankle, which, as far as life things goes, is a minor little problem. It means you won't be jogging this week, that's all. Mm -hmm. When your other leg left the scene, that one just kind of panicked. <laughs> be hard to actually snap one of your main leg bones doing what you did. It isn't, isn't that much force. It's enough, but I mean, it's not. Uh... Yeah. 
Removing the sock reveals a more serious injury than the medic suspected. She's broken bones in six places. Yes. That's right there, Zan. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get the cot in here so we can get her out of this hole. Ronnie, I want you to take charge of the ankle and we'll take the rest of her. Okay, that's going to make you feel a little, little bit better, hon. Contrary to popular belief, we don't have any really good pain medicine. So we're not trying to be mean to you. Even in this kind of rescue, drug abuse plays its part. The paramedic trucks have been robbed so frequently that they no longer carry strong painkillers on board. Okay. Landing. Frequently, uh, we don't have anything available in the immediate area for lunch, so if we don't bring a meal in to prepare at the firehouse, which we do occasionally. We go to one of the local markets or one of the local uh, fast food places. Since I have the radio, everybody more or less has to stay in my line of sight. Got no big slices out. If we get a response, I know immediately where to find them so that we can uh, quickly get on the apparatus and leave and take the response. And a uh, large, or regular fry, regular fry. On the boardwalk. <laughs> on the boardwalk, watching the slates go by. I need a couple chilies there. Be all right then. Be nice then. <laughs> Hey, pal. What's the matter with you? Fuck, bro. Uh, I don't know. You called us. He's just been drinking. Yeah, a little bit. I have seen. Well, did you have one now? Ah, hell no. Oh, hell no. Why don't you get on walking Engine away? Engine 13, we'll away medic too. 10. We have a 55, 60 year old male. He was unconscious at one time. He's since been revived. We have police on the scene. He's possibly intoxicated. Time to get food. <laughs> we gotta go. The four-year-old girl has fallen from a second-floor window, where, according to police, she had been left alone in the house with her two-year-old brother. Okay, step. It's breathing. Let's get her rolled over. Let's get her rolled over. Got her head. You got her. 13, uh, 2300 block Adding Street. The call is for a child for that second story window. What medic do I have? We have a call here. She fell out of the window? Okay. She fell out of the window. You got any every action? You got a light, Luke? Neighbors found her in the road. 
source of light. Right here. The reactive. No movement. How about the other one? Mm. No, there, so there, there, there's any in there. No reaction. Four years old, she's been coming back and forth, coming around, going back out again. She's got a bad head injury. Sir, can you give me a pediatric collar? Pediatric collar. Hold still, Kanisha. Stay still. You're all right. Kanisha. Kanisha, Kanisha calm down, baby. Everything will be all right. 41. 41. 41. According to witnesses, she came right out to this position. She didn't bang off the steps. She came out head first. She went in face down and got her. Yeah, I think it'd be easier. Got her head. Got the leg undone there? Yep. Is she mobilized? Head's not taped down. Okay. That's it. Here. Hold her head. Get her on the stretcher, right? I'm going to take her down. I'm going to take her down. All right. Ready? Ready? Yeah. One, three. One, two, three. In this city where firefighters are trained paramedics, it's moments like this, when life is on the line, that their skills are paramount. Kenny Lee will assist in the medic truck, Steve Lockett will drive the ambulance, and Paul Novak follow behind in the fire engine. Give me shock trauma and John Clausen's pediatric team online. Okay, switch to mid three. Mid channel three. Okay, Baltimore City Medic 4 on mid channel three. We want to know which patient wants to be a patient. Hold still, honey. Or Josh Hopkins. Hold still, honey. At this time, she is a uh, she is resisting according to a uh, noxious stimuli, but she is grading down back and forth with the doctor. Probably gonna have to break her. Yeah, you gonna make a shock trauma? It's gonna be yeah, shock trauma. Shock trauma. trauma. We need a driver. Oh, they dilated. No reactions. Yet. We got no reactions. But I mean, it's it's dark in there. You got okay. your light again? I got it right here on my hip pocket. Over here on the side. Is she like this? Yeah. She's like posturing here. No, there's still no reaction. What do they look like? Okay, that one's swollen. This is the other one. Swollen. Shut. Okay. Nothing. Still no reaction. All right. They're not dilated though. That's no. Good. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. They're wide, but they're not fixed. No. Posturing is the term for involuntary movements associated with possible brain damage. Kanisha's life is hanging in the balance as her brain swells. Yeah, it's a little No, take it off. Take it off. She's, she's posturing. We need to get that arm down. Ready? She's clamping She's clamping Come on, baby. Come on, little one. Come on. So far. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think it's swelling. No, that's her teeth are clamped down. Her brain is swelling. Her brain is swelling. We can't get her, get her innovated. Get this help with the... Come on. She's doing OK. Yeah. Her heart rate's coming up. You got a finger up. Um, you know what? Pull her shoes off, pull both her shoes off, put it on her foot. No, she's, she's posturing. The machine measures the oxygen levels in her blood. She's close to death, 
and her best chance is her age. Children often survive injuries that would kill an adult. Come on, baby. Yeah, we're only at 79 over here, we're at 80. There we 100. are, we got 100%, got that's 100 cool. Got 100% going in. Okay, hey Kenny, yeah. can you take the straps on the stretcher and strap her down, please? Okay, hang on, let me get the other you shoe ready? off. She's sliding. Yeah. She's down, you're 99. Are we hooked up? 100%. Okay, good. Grab the hydro down, shut that off for a minute so it doesn't back up. Please. You got it shut down? Yeah. Coming out. Leads off. He's down. Right on ahead. She's clamped down. We couldn't get her innovated. Yeah. Right, right, Fell out of second floor window. Take the whole one, the, the white one. Good job. Got Rocket Man, wait for him. <sighs> Investigator John Griffith determined that a faulty water boiler had ignited paint fumes and caused the explosion. Captain Reggie Session established the fire was started by an accelerant. This incident will be reviewed by the district attorney. The woman in the hole underwent a six-hour operation. It's uncertain if she'll be able to walk again unaided. Amazingly, despite facial fractures and concussion, Kanisha made a full recovery and returned home after just 10 days. For the teams of the Baltimore City Fire Department, this is what gives them the most satisfaction on the streets of fire. Next night on 4, it's Babylon 5.